and gear here. <laughs> it's Live ins- streaming is on. It's insane. So I'm going to actually light my face up because <laughs> mm. I'm a lighting person. It's just crazy. The lighting guy, a black lighting guy too. So I, I'm sure you have added challenges with shadow to deal with that I don't have to. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 there we go. Okay. Here we go. Whoa, that's a little bright. Let's fix oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Now I can see your chest hairs. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Very, Let's very make sexy. It a little less abusive. There we go. Um, All right. So let me do it. Let me do a little intro moment here. Just, just this is Sheldon. Sheldon's a old friend and I would say professional colleague, I guess. Um, from Vancouver, we've known each other for fuck over twenty years, probably mm-hmm. from the old club and rave scene and he is one of the more technical uh people that i know and apparently also very interested in live streaming right now he's always been the super duper lighting uber automation guy um in in the class of uh of yeah of tech propeller head weenies that uh, i turn to for solutions and i was just lamenting my obs adventures with him and uh Apparently, I'm not alone, which I'm encouraged by because I thought I was just dumb. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. It was, I mean, I, I, I go through my, my trials because I, I really wanted to get my show up and running. And I knew I would need several cameras because my show is basically a cooking show. It's, it's basically a talk show that starts with a cooking, a cooking segment. And I eventually want to go into like a fashion segment or this and that. But then, since all, so many of our friends are DJs and 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 producers or promoters or whatever, I wanted to feature them on the show, the local guys, in, in, until we get to a point where the show's established and we bring more international people in and and promote the house team because uh, you know you know I'm never, never mind your idea of like the local guys is lots of other people you know. <laughs> reminder Jay Tripwire is an international talent. We exactly. just don't exactly. think of him as that because he's with the guy who helped us set up for fucking parties for years. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> or, 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 or neighbor or any of the guys who are playing all over the freaking world. Doesn't matter. Exactly. Tyler exactly. Spears, who cares? I mean, it, the bottom line is that you can't wave your hand in Vancouver and not hit a DJ. True. So, True. So so that being said, I, I, I figured this would be a great platform. Um, it's called Saturday Open Tables to promote. What's it called? Uh, Saturday Open Tables, SOT. And the show okay. is SOT Live. And basically, people come and over. This, and this is YouTube or, or Twitch or where are you doing Twitch this? Right now. Twitch? I'm, I'm going to reach stream to, uh, use Restream to go to uh, YouTube and. Uh, and I would eventually want to wind up on Mixcloud because Mixcloud has all the rights. And and the problem is, it's Mixcloud. I tried it and it, it it completely crashed. It can't handle the video yet. They're not up to speed yet, but they will be. And Mixcloud has light licenses for all the audio. And Twitch just lets you do it. And and um, yeah, but you know, I mean, you can see that that's going to end. I was just gonna say, like, like as soon as the the labels wake up to that, I think right now the the video game, the the music that's being played mostly is the music in the video games, and so the video game guys don't give a fuck because they're they're promoting yeah. their video games. But but as more DJs move and start playing sets on it, as I've seen the trend, because clearly the demand in my mind is to get around the DRM. So you know, it's like. Apple figured out how to beat them at the download off LimeWire and shit game because you just got tired of getting viruses and stuff. And fuck it, if I don't have to buy the ten dollar, twelve dollar album anymore, and I can just buy the one ninety nine dollar cent track I want, then sure, I'll 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 pay for it. And I think that yeah. has to happen with the streaming. And you know, a, a, an artist should be able to buy a, an upgraded license for their tune so they can stream it. Period. Like well, if you want to, if you want to stream it, buy you know, pay the extra two point five percent for the uh, for the track, and then and then you you can stream it, or I don't know, there's that, or just the fucking platforms need to pony up and and uh, you know and and pay for <laughs> so can rights and stuff, well, no, right? No, see, that's what mixed clouds already done. 
They're just Lake Cloud's done it. They, they but, but won't that be for a limited, like, like, no. and a, you know, Lake isn't Cloud. that for certain artists or certain labels? And then, but they don't have these labels and not, not no, no, Mix Cloud. See, the thing is, it's most house music. I mean, it, it's the producers want it played. They don't, there's most of the house music that's out. You go to track source and all those things. I mean, even are, the, are they are they using Creative Commons and those kinds of of licenses that are that are more permissive, or or is it still all, a t, you know, uh, ASCAP or whatever? Like, no, what are the license structures? No, you don't have to. You don't have to have a license to produce a track, and and put it on track source or Beatport or whatever. Mm -hmm. You those labels, those labels that the, the, those those artists are on. Most of them are DJ oriented labels and they want their stuff played in clubs and whatnot. It's the the problem is it's when you you play a top forty track I mean a track that has uh, elements uh, and it hasn't been completely licensed by um like say for instance Danny Tagnella uh, or or little Louis Vegas remixes something with uh, Beyonce. Right. That's when you run into the issue, but it's still the producers, they want that track played because it's not played on the radio. Yeah, that's always, I mean, I pretty much stopped listening to any, I, I you know, SoundCloud is my go-to to just listen to DJ mixes and bypass all of that bullshit. And I just stopped kind of, I don't track individual songs or yeah. releases or that kind of stuff. What's that? You have, but the the average, the 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 music industry is still driven by the freaking record companies, the RIA. Those guys, they they they're antiquated. They're on their way out, and they know, it, and they're doing everything they can. At wow, <laughs> they've been they've been trying to sue their way, you exactly. know, into into in back into existence for for you know since the Napster days, basically. Exactly, I they, exactly. I, and they're getting I think they flubbed the. You know the how to how to deal with your uh, digitization of your of your world, uh, yeah, but I mean, let's be cool. honest. Like, like the, they were such shysters, right? Like every fucking couple of years, you have a new. Oh, I got to rebuy my Beatles album now on Blu-ray or fucking new compressed CD, SD, blah blah, whatever. Like, not to uh, mention it, what they did to the artists. I mean, they were ripping them off for, for years and years and years, and now. The artists have realized that the way to make money is, and they don't make money on, on the, the music as far as the recordings. They make money on touring and concerts and whatnot, that, which plays into my industry. Well, but yeah, and but now that's fucking in danger, right? Like, like how many people are going to be going back to concerts and what kind of revenue stream is that in reality? Like, I think, I, frankly, you like you need that Patreon type of approach with, with, your fans i think where people do democratize like like if you get a million people paying you fucking a dollar a month that's a fucking crazy good income you know what i mean that, that you wouldn't get touring that clear you know what i mean without without a whole shit ton of expenses no doubt i mean it's it's one of those situations where the art the artists is are, are basically gaining more and more power because say for instance, if you you produce a track or whatnot, and you're you know like I like all, a DJ buys it for you know I buy spend I buy all my tracks by the way, I I go out and spend two two dollars on that track and that you know then I play it out and then I stream it, you know the people are gonna want to hear that track and they're gonna they're gonna there's going to be a way to monetize and it hasn't really happened yet like to make sure these artists are getting paid for producing the track because not everyone's going to go out and spend the two dollars i feel like a really good affiliate plugin that was also like you know how i i don't i i'm sure there exists plugins that do this i just don't know the industry well enough but uh you know if you can if you can identify that i've played a song like there must be auto track building you know if you're in a club or something like that where they'll they'll record all the all the songs that you've done or or is that still all done manually like back you in know, what happens here, when you play a big club let's say like uh uh 
not Mars, but that's a bad example because no one's paying for anything back then. But uh, <laughs> like, uh, no, but uh, they pay their so can Ministry of Sound. Say, for instance, you're playing Ministry of Sound, and it's a big club and yada yada. That that, that club has to pay a certain fee to have yeah. if it's big enough to, to, to have the DJs and whatnot. And and it depends on where you're like in Chicago. Give me a fucking break. Try to try to have they pull that shit at the smart bar. Give me a break. It would never fucking fly. You know, this is where Derek Carter has his residency. You know, that those guys in Ch towns like Chicago, they'll t <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good luck. I'm not, I'm, well, I mean, then it just becomes, vol you know, I mean, same thing, right? You can, you can still download all your tracks. Why do you buy your tracks? To, to support the producers. Of course. So, you know, and, and, a certain and, percentage of them are. And if you're making it, uh, you know, it's back to my Apple argument. Once they made it 99 cents a track, it was no longer attractive to go out and try and find it on a fucking pure exactly. network because it was like, fuck it, for the, for the hassle of trying to find it and maybe getting a virus or maybe getting mm -hmm. fucking spyware or whatever, uh, you know, the, the monopoly of the $12, $14 album when I really just wanted those two songs. Uh, was broken and that to me that was the the barrier that made the consumer just go fuck it I'll just pay for it it's easier right yeah. and and it, unless there's that engine uh, it, you know people will go and try and download uh, stuff or unless they're ethically you know like I never did with with films because my wife was a entertainment lawyer and I worked in the film industry and so I just me out too. of principle I would buy all my DVDs and people me thought too. I was crazy and you know I had stacks and stacks and stacks of DVDs and um but you know it was just an ethics thing right it was like well I I want to get paid for my work so I'll pay other people for their work it seems a little fair <laughs> but we're the exception I think and that you know in that right? uh, not so much it's interesting that you bring that up because once I was really freaking wasted and I came home and I was going to play a set and I accidentally deleted everything on my hard drive music all my music and I was devastated of course because I'm like what a drunken idiot fuck up but because I did pay for all my music, I was able to go to the service B port and track source or whoever I bought my music from and say, listen, and re, and re download the I got everything back. So it 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 pays the it was a great lesson to me. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a good point, actually. The the insurance level of it uh uh is is nice. I again and I think there are if you don't make it prohibitively expensive, that's the other key, right? If you're if you're charging me forty five bucks, then fuck off. But if it's yeah. five bucks, well, whatever. Exactly. And there's exactly. you know the the net effect is that uh, there are enough audience for any of these little niches where you know a five dollar subscription. If you can get people to say you know sure I'll buy you a cup of coffee every month, but you know a few hundred thousand of those makes a big fucking difference, right? Well, and which brings up how the DJs are actually starting. I mean, there's there's uh, and mechanisms in place now for DJs to monetize their their um audience. Their, well, their 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 streams. Like uh, Mixcloud has an option that you know you, you can like if you want to donate to the DJ, yada yada yada. And they I'm, have a they have a tip jar. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Yeah. That that's that's good yeah, to know. I, I saw of, that as a big missing. Do do you know Patreon? Are you familiar with Patreon? No. So uh, uh literally four weeks into no three and a half. Literally, it took me two weeks to get to the point where I could stream, and then I've streamed three times since then. And then Saturday will be the first time I'm able to stream with my quote music um, director. And he's he's kind of like my Johnny Carson. I mean, as I, if I'm Johnny Carson, he'd be my Ed McMahon. Right. And because of the COVID thing, we couldn't we couldn't be in the same room. So it's and 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 it's the show, I'm I'm telling you man, if, if, with that element, because try running four cameras, cooking a meal, and then DJing while talking about the show at the same time trying to you know it was it was nothing short of just 
hard. Hey man, <laughs> I I hear you. I've I've uh, I've got a little more experience with uh, with streaming, uh, but uh, but yeah, it's you're you're the one man band of, uh, of video production. Roland makes a really nice foot switcher, by the way. If you're ever <laughs> for your camera shit, I I, uh, I definitely was I was oogling that. I was like, yeah, that's a really good idea. I used a Roland device, and and this is this is one of the things that I, I got into it with DJ Sue about it. Because I don't know how he's going through everything, but my rig is really pretty um, fundamental as far as how I get the audio and video into OBS. Oh, yeah. So, so let's so let's talk about that. How do you? So you said you have a four camera uh, setup. Yeah. So, okay. so are you going to a, a pre switcher and then running that out into OBS as a as a as a fixed as a switch? Feed or you're switching it in OBS. I switch in OBS, and I'll just I, I can briefly describe exactly what's happening. I can have you, can you can you camera over to it, or is that uh, is it? Not, well, I'd uh, have to pick my computer up. I'm not doing this off my cell phone. That's why. Yeah. I yeah okay. Got. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, but I'll describe it, and I I can. Mm, I can try. Okay. First of all, I use two cell phones. I use a um, Samsung A50, which I owned, and then I went out and bought a, um, a Apple um, iPhone. Yeah, I got this rig. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it's got the light. I, I want one of those ring lights. I, the ring light. Uh, yeah, the ring lights. I've been I've been eyeballing those two. Fucking lighting guys, eh? Like. Yeah, well, I got so I've got that rig, and that's for the A50. And then I have one of those. Let me see if I can pivot to my. Okay, that I've got one of those those oh, nice. standing ring lights. And what are and those are just like USB simple LED uh, lights? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, there's Locking. USB and the, this one. This this called a, a stabilizer, right? Is that like a little gimbal or or? Uh, it's just they call it a stabilizer. You a you poor man's gimbal, that, right? Right. Oh, and yeah. you have the nice external audio I see on the they, on the you little, little mini mic boom. Your microphone, which doesn't work that well. I, I mean, it does, but it. That's you want the la, you want the lapel really for for it to matter. I think it, exactly. So I mean, that would that would work if I was sitting down talking to somebody but i was walking or my, my show is a cooking show so i needed to be um mobile so i, I mean, bought a wireless lav set that uh but it was like too fucking aliexpress uh it just like no. <laughs> didn't you know didn't cut it for <laughs> i've wasted so much money trying to fucking do it on the cheap you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> I did do, but it, it, it. But a lot of this gear paid off because this thing. I would not use the mic, but using the ring light as a key light and having a stabilizer is huge. So, yeah, yeah. so that's one of my cameras, and I use um, the an app to power it. And uh, which one is it? Is it? It's um, it's uh, Android Cam, Droid Cam, Droid Cam. Okay, so that that's one. And then I have I picked up a really inexpensive uh, iPhone five, which has a great camera, and it's super compact. And I put that in a ring light, and I use uh, Orionin. Uh, it's spelled R I R I U N, and that goes into the uh, ring light tri tripod. That's the th uh, second cam. Right. Then the third cam. Is a USB camera I got off of um, Amazon. It was like a hundred bucks, not even ninety bucks. It came so, here. And so one sec. So, uh, so you've got a USB, and then how are you running the two i cameras? Are you running them? How are you running those in? Are you physically cabling them in, or are you IPing them in? Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. I still got more gear to get through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and then my my um. Fourth camera is the actual. I, I, this this all happened within a week, a week and a half. My biggest problem to start with is I didn't. I was trying to run Serato and OBS off the same computer. 
Bam! That was exactly my premise with Sesh Cam was that like you can't run the two off the same fucking computer. You're just you destined could. to you can, but it's risking better, a lock up big time, right? I mean better be a, a, a hot rod. It better be that like super gamer loaded. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like that, you know, t- tons your, of your average laptop DJ running on a fucking netbook is just gonna like no, well, I, I had a, I'm, it was off my 2012 MacBook Pro, which or, is, they're all with MacBooks, I guess, is really the, the reality. Which is, which I, is, I'm a real DJ because I have a MacBook. Well, I mean, it's just for DJs, Toronto is built for the Mac, right? So that's why I, I know I had the original tractor. I had the I had the what was the, it was Richie Hotton's uh, thing, wasn't it? And then and then he sold yeah. it to Reactor. Yeah, what was it I, before Tractor? It was fucking. It was. I had the one even be final track. Final was scratch. It? Final scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Final scratch. scratch. I still have the fucking sound card. <laughs> yeah, but the latency on that wasn't. It, it, nothing. Once Serato came out, it was. I, I was on tour with fucking Little Wayne, and uh, Chris Brown. I was literally on tour as their lighting tech, and I saw the DJ was using. Um. Serato and I, I, I you, with the vinyl emulation, I was like, okay, fuck this. I'm not repairing the record again. Yeah, Serato really seemed to like. I I made the upgrade to Tractor, and it just didn't fucking work for me. And then they were trying to integrate it with Tractor Studio, and I just wasn't that advanced as a like. I just wanted to keep fucking spinning vinyl, but with digital, you know, music, right? And uh, Tractor got confused and i think serato yeah. solved that but by that time oh, i was, I was sure. done and i wasn't yeah. buying more fucking hardware <laughs> yeah 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 no. screw it i'm sticking to my old allen and heath and it's just gonna be fucking analog fuck you all <laughs> yeah you know what and there's something to be said about that but the, but but as far as what i was doing i serato saved my butt i was playing all in cities all over the place and there's no way i was carting fucking records anymore that being yeah. said back to the gear back to obs yeah so my fourth camera is um, once I discovered I needed another um, computer to run OBS. Uh, my buddy was running OBS off his fucking Surface Pro One. Oh, like a really off of a off a tablet, off a Surface Pro mo- um, um, laptop slash uh, tablet. Yeah, yeah, one, one of those whatever hybrid yeah. kind of. So I went on Craigslist. And I found a Surface Pro 2 for 280. <laughs> this is all within a week. I wound up spending like 700 bucks. Right. And then, and so I went out and bought the, the Surface Pro Pro. I, I previously, because I knew I was going to need multiple audio feeds, I um, bought a, um, a Mac VLZ 1202 to replace the one that was stolen. And then, and then from that point, I needed a, um, audio card, uh, an external um, audio interface. And I settled with the, uh, my buddy was using the Roland Go Mixer. I'll, I'll get it for you, hold on. I, I, I think I know the... I've coveted Roland fucking video mixers forever, but uh, they were always out of my price range. No, this, this, this here? Oh, what the fuck? This okay, is, that's not this, at all this, what I was thinking. This was the solution. This here. Okay, okay well. Oh, it's so cute. Look at it. It's about four by four inches. What? It, so, and what are the inputs on it? It has a, um, let's see. This here is the instrument input. Uh-huh. And then this is a microphone input. Uh-huh. And then you can put your guitar input there, okay. Right and here. then you've got uh, um, a line input as well, with uh, the eighth-inch line inputs. These are all um, quarter-inch uh, unbalanced inputs. And then you've got your your um, your gain here, so right? You just right pick there. which one's active, and then and then set so, the gain yeah, on it. So That's like, the idea. Yeah. I've got the, what, what I use is the microphone. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, instrument input. Right. So I take all my audio feeds, which I'll talk about later, 
goes through my Mackie VLZ twelve oh two. Uh-huh. And into So you've already, you've pre-mixed it on there basically. All my audio gets mixed through this. And this goes into an um my USB. It's got a um mini USB to USB 2.0. And it comes out of that into and that's a um, separate that's like a little sound card, external sound card that you're talking about. Into right, my okay. computer. Right. Into my Mac. And then OBS detects it. It picks that up as a driver, basically. As, well, it picks it up and you and, and then as an audio, sorry, an audio input. As, as an audio source. Right. So and then and the video sources all come through. You got two wireless sources. How do you do the how do you do the wireless sources on OBS? Same same way. Same way you, you go into I'd have to show you, but you 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 add them and you, you could make me a video, which because I can't okay. figure it out. But what that? what is it? So, I would, I, so I, you go to add add a camera source or or you it, you it, it, I have to get the um I think it says add video source. I mean I give if you can give me a second I'll just grab the uh, source. I'll grab the other computer. Give me a second. It's right, right. here. Yeah, because I literally was trying to figure out how to use cell phones in the mix. I can use my webcam because it's plugged in to USB, but I can't. I, I can't find a. I can't find a driver to be able to use. You know, either the cell direct or even like some sort of plug-in solution. I, I do well, have. Yeah, I just gave you the. I, I do have USB. You're yeah. gonna use. You're gonna use either Android cam. Um, Android cam. I use Droid Cam for the um, for the uh, Android phone and Orion. Right, it's spelled I'm all, I. I'm R all uh, I U N. Droid Cam. Let's. See. It's called Droid Cam. Droid Cam. Let me let me share my screen. It's used Droid Droid Cam. I I could just send you the. Hold on. Let me open up another. Here we go. Oh, night. No, that's freaking. Yeah, Droid Cam. But I want it in the App Store, right? Because I want to just push it to. Uh, me. No, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you use that, and then OBS will. That one's a little glitchier, but the iRyan, the one I use for the. Uh, the one I use for the. The, the I... iPhone 5. That one's, that one's more stable, and it looks better. I have a I have an iPad. Would it work with the iPad? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, how do you spell I Ryan? I R I U N. Is that it? Correct. Well, that's interesting. It's coming up in the Play Store. I guess that's my default. This one. Yep. Oh, that's okay. Good. And you want it? Um, yeah. Yeah, listen, Web, I, webcam I, for Ubuntu. Oh, cool. Okay, so there's they have ones for all of the. And is this a pay software? Or is this a free as well? Oh, and VR, dude. I've been playing. I don't know if you saw my uh, my 360 Squirrel Cam or not, but I've also been playing with 360. Do you, do you happen to know if uh, if you can run 360 through OBS? I have no idea, man. I'm 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 I've been spending like uber amounts of time. Um, <laughs> trying to get my show going and uh, I uh, let's see you're still on here I'll, I'm gonna send you a photo um, this is what my studio looks like now this is in my apartment give me a second I'll just dig this up maybe I don't know I'm pretty sure it's still here so here we go I sent that to you on your um, messenger so that's that's my rig. It, I sent it to you on Messenger. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, oh, weird. I, it, it was uh, it was so dramatic. My uh, 
my transition, I had to install a new Explorer for some reason when you were trying to message me and I was having so many driver issues. So there's now a new version of Explorer with a new icon or, or edge, I mean, Microsoft Edge. Sounds like I, world. Why is my screen not working? Huh, I got my surface isn't working. And I don't have OBS on. It must be out of batteries. Oh, here it comes. This, by the way, the surface. Yeah, I think it's out. No, here it is. Oh, I still got my mouse here. Oh, hmm. I don't know what's up. Hmm. Interesting. I can't tell whether it's dead or, or not. It's just not working. But anyway, when you go into OBS, let's see, I might even have it on this still. Oh, I do. Hold on. I'll just upload it. Give me a second. When you go into OBS, holy shit. Oh, give me a, You're going to, when you click. Okay, so what were you. Okay, when you go on the app, you click sources, then you, it's called a video capture device. And then the camera would show up there, right? Did you follow me? Yeah, hold on. I'm just trying to open, uh, trying to find OBS here. <clears throat> yeah, I'm very happy to share all this knowledge because. I wouldn't want anyone to go through what I went through. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was just like, man, this learning curve is steep. Is I mean, steep. I, I see where once you've configured all your scenes and stuff and you kind of have, you know, once you've got all your presets down, I, I get where it'll just be like, wow, this fucking rocks. But, but it, the amount of pre-planning required to be able to do it uh, successfully is definitely uh, not um, small. Well, actually, so, I find so what am I... once you know it, once you know what to do, it's not that hard. It really isn't. It's it's actually really really straightforward once you once you do know what you're doing. Right. But, yeah. Exactly. But but, but the, there's no magic on what you're doing. Yeah. Exactly. It's that that's it, the and there's no intuitive. It would be nice if there was a, you know, a, a rookie skin over the expert. Like, this is expert mode, and then you have, like, the, you know, the beginner mode or, or yeah, whatever well, that you can turn on. It, it, but to be honest, it's – you can't be free. Oh, no, no. But, but I think, like, to me, these – you know, I mean, it's like look at WordPress, right? Like, WordPress has WordPress a – <laughs> uh, so WordPress is the default web publishing software that everybody, not everybody, I mean, it's, it's, it's got a uh, huge stranglehold on uh, websites because it's an open source blogging platform. It's free. Oh, I and, think I know and, and people have written like thousands of different plugins for it. So you can plug in gotcha. a shopping cart. You can plug in you know, the theme yeah. pack or the realtor thing or the yeah. fucking blah okay. stock quoting, whatever, because it's so to me, the I'm looking for the OBS kind of reskins, if you will, the yeah. mod, the mod culture uh, yeah. of OBS that, that maybe it doesn't exist yet. Maybe I'm, you know, but do you it remember doesn't. like, do you remember back in the, back in the day, like you could buy the, the, the tour would come with like the flyer art and the like you basically bought you know somebody's creative fucking vision which was you know the the fucking you know epiphany or whatever you know whatever tour with these three djs and it came with like the tour the all the orion ones and the yeah. do, do you know what i mean like to me there's a I think there's a business to be had basically in just skinning this so you don't start with nothing. And, you know and there's. I, I was actually thinking that I would, as, uh, as a side hustle, um, basically taking my knowledge as far as OBS to 
producers and DJs and just saying, listen, don't worry about it. We'll show up. We'll do the camera work for you. We'll we'll just show up in your. But I mean, that's in this COVID that's time. That's in the that's in the old school. So in the new school, you and I do a course on on uh, you know on Udemy or or on any of these platforms on how to set up your your software and you and you push them towards you know your pro services which are a bunch of presets and a bunch of yeah here if you buy this camera and this thing and this thing off my affiliate links and then you know plug in this you know upload this uh uh scene pack that we've created for you that, that has you all do? the matters is that when it's yeah professionally yeah yeah i mean that's that's effectively what i've done since undernet days is yeah is just you know is re position technology for a market i mean i have a i have a publishing engine uh, uh that builds you know websites very quickly and has all the back mm -hmm. uh the back end stuff that that you need to automate your yeah. typical business it's now a little bit dated and and i really you know like i said there's wordpress and and shopify and these kind of tools that have evolved since that are individually more focused on mm -hmm. each tool right um but but uh so anyway and i i honestly my own sort of i had uh I, actually you'll appreciate this let me just share this with you just for my sure. own fun <clears throat> so my my journey with uh to cut a long story short i i find testimonials if you're gonna, as a business owner, as a small business owner, the the best marketing there is is still the word of mouth marketing. And so, if you could right. get vid video testimonials, has kind of evolved into a niche that I was very very focused on uh, within the larger, you know, because everybody has a website. Every if you have a website, you need testimonials, and increasingly, people don't believe them if it just says you know, blah, 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 text, five stars, Terry, like, you know, uh, it's not, and, and watching a video, you know, you can hire an actor and they can fake it, but it's a little harder. It's a little easier to tell genuine testimonials. Yeah. So, so I had been very focused on that, uh, sort of sole task. And then I discovered these things, which are essentially a little, a little, uh, billboard that's a you know just a simple sort of slide video player but but then on the side it had a um a cell phone charger right so oh. these the, these sit there's like a little locking mechanism so you can lock them onto a table at a, mm -hmm. at a coffee shop or a dentist waiting room or something like that and uh so so this is what i was very focused on but of course with covid same same issue like you know all the coffee shops are this yeah. is the last thing they're going to be thinking of it and even you know coming back like are you going to want to touch this are you like yeah just, there's just so many issues with it um it, that it, i you know what though that's just it, it, it's okay it's just on hold it, I, it's, it's just yeah on. i mean again i i just it's it it has uh it, it for me it's caused me to really kind of do a full circle back where it's like, okay, well, what am I good at? What am I, you know, what, like video has always been my core. Like I think back when we met, I was still working in the film industry when, when we originally what, what met. What was your role in the film industry? Were you, what, what I, I was, I, uh, I mean, I did lighting design and, and theater was my background. And then, and then in the film industry, I, I kind of lucked into being the uh, assistant to Terry, uh, who was the producer of uh, Madison. Do you remember Madison? Uh, high school teen drama yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. It had like Barry Pepper on it. So you, and, like, you weren't oh, IOTC then. You're, what's that? You weren't IOTC. Uh, I was, uh, uh, no, I was, I just, I got hired in, uh, I, I got hired in through the, the Vancouver Film Festival because I had organized yeah. the, uh, I had organized the new filmmaker day there. And then, mm -hmm. and then I had met Terry and she just kind of hired me, which is why I didn't go through the, the ranks. Yeah. yeah. You didn't have to do the union thing. Well, I did. I mean, I, I had a, I had a card, I had a permit, like I did flagman shit at, at, at different points. Uh, but, but I mean, I, I, part of the attraction of the rave scene frankly was that i didn't you know i saw that as a way that i could 
do my own creative. To yeah. me, I, I I literally had this epiphany at Summer Love '94 where I was watching like Delight I, and you know the whole shit show that was going on with with uh, nobody getting paid and everything. But I but I I remember just having this moment of like fuck theater and film and shit. Like this is the new theater. This is like you know this is popular. This yeah, has a theme. It has a college. <laughs> I What's knew that? I was going to do. I have a technical theater degree. I knew for a fact that. My my degree says light and sound is design. It doesn't say technical theater. I've yeah. never you know, I fucking I sometimes I just loathe theater people. They just, they're just <laughs> what? fucking art fags. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm a big dumb jock though, so that that's another story. But let's get back to OBS. Yeah. Let's get back to uh, yeah okay so so I, I I think I mean I think I get it so you, so with the right app you can then see it in the uh, I was missing what app to use was was the upshot um, yeah. but then and then it just it's a video source or which which one yeah. are you doing switch screens here then it would come in you would you would go into your sources you you add you would hit plus and then you it would become up as a video capture device okay. Yeah, which I was trying to figure out how to do with the 360 camera too. That that was, you might uh, be able to. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I haven't found a way to yet, but I'm I'm hopeful because I, I really love 360. Is just another whole level of this shit that just blows me away. Which which is it's funny because this all I've been seeing a lot of 360. I started a, a food group. I don't know if you knew about it. No, it's called, it's called um, What's on Your Plate, Vancouver. Oh yeah. I think I didn't. I, I remember seeing the invite, and I was just—it depressed me because I'm like, I'm not in Vancouver, and all my friends are. <laughs> okay, which is funny because because of that, I had to change its name. Um, because <laughs> too many expats have left already. Well, I'm in Nanaimo. Was, can I still play? <laughs> exactly, well, exactly. But in and in, 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 I've got a lot of friends all over, so I changed it to um, "We Eat with Our Eyes First," and it's it's a food porn site. Nice, and 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 it's gone. It's I think at this. I, point, I will I will send my wife your way. She's like the ultimate. We can't touch it until I've Instagrammed it. Fucking yeah. food porny. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny because she, I think she'll really enjoy it because um and and I'm please spread the word because this is what happened. It's in let's see, in five and a half weeks, it's grown to twelve hundred members. Nice. Is, which is nice growth, but then I look at this other site. It's got forty six thousand, and he started three weeks before I did. But this this guy does a cooking class as well. So, and there's another site that has thirteen thousand people. So, don't you love these people? Like you know, with like a million fucking followers, and they're talking about you know whatever they're they're garden or their whatever you know like it just blows me away that there's a niche for all of this shit you know yeah you know what and, and i'm sorry if you've got freaking a hundred thousand followers on your freaking youtube channel you're making money yeah and it, it yeah at, at a hundred thousand you are it's it's you know it's tough to get it to that hundred thousand mark and and i always caution people to don't like Think don't, of the monetization as a bonus. Don't exactly. aim. Don't have that as the primary thing exactly. because also Google has a you know bad history of fucking pulling that rug out from under you. Uh, so if you build it with sponsors and you know your own internal kind of ways of monetizing it, uh, that's always better. Yeah. Well, and I and that was never my intent. My intent my, when I first started it, it was it's because Kareem. You remember Kareem from the Real? Yeah, yeah. Computer. she yeah. was on Facebook bitching that she didn't know what to cook next, and I'm like, and I'm I was already a member of uh, What's on Your Plate. There's like several of those in the states, and I'm like, I know what I'm gonna do. This will be fun, and I, I I launched it, and within two weeks I had like 400 members. And I'm like, holy shit, people love this, and they just it's called it's called um, We Eat with Our Eyes First. And, it's, and, it's, and this is on YouTube? Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Yeah. So why, so actually that's interesting. Why Facebook over YouTube? Because it's, 
and and why one over the other? Why not both? Because this is specifically a platform for people to post their pictures. Ah, okay. Food Pardon porn. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and, and another. I thought, one, I thought you were saying a cooking show. I had. I still had video in my. That head. that I'm doing on Twitch because because of the music element. I, and YouTube, I have a YouTube channel, but when I I wanted to get all the bugs ironed out before I go on YouTube. You once it's on YouTube, YouTube's the big show, basically it's the big show. That's why. Right. So I'm I'm gonna broadcast Saturday with my. my <laughs> it's okay. Show. None of the gamers are watching the fucking weird DJ cooking show, so it's so I can work the kinks out over on Twitch and then take it over to prime time. <laughs> Exactly. I feel you, brother. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. So, so we we we're gonna we're gonna do it for the first time with a guest. I'm I'm That's I'm hilarious. actually waking I up. Love, I, I love the uh, I love the underlying psychology there. That kind of says it all, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how. I mean. It's the it's the practice ground, you know. You go over there. Nobody's looking too closely. There's a bunch of weird fucking teenagers with purple hair. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Nobody's fucking paying attention. The funniest thing is the first broadcast was on Facebook Live, and I didn't tell anybody except the people that were on the uh, the uh, the sub this open tables group. So there was maybe a hundred people that knew about it, and then Bradley Shin. Goes and posts it all over the place. I'm like, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Thanks, B roll. Thanks, Bradley. And this is <laughs> so the, my, the premiere show was like just me, you know, Mr. Fucking Media Horror himself. <laughs> You're like, I didn't need your whole social following. Fuck. <laughs> oh, it's so fucking funny. And then and, and I made guacamole and I was able to knock that out in 10 minutes. And then go over and then do the DJ set and talk about the show. And I had I was cameras are glitching out this and that. I got one more thing for you that you that's essential if you're going to use OBS. This is an this just, this is just, another just app. Have to, just have to share this. Putting putting their putting their uh, oops wait the other way. Putting their reviews from Yelp and uh, nice. Putting their Yelp reviews and their and their Facebook reviews up on the up on the screen there. Well played, <clears throat> Sorry. Well played. Go, go ahead with your go ahead with your. Uh, this is another tip for any type of streaming, and especially what I found with using OBS. So do things happen. Do if things can, happen. That's, that, probably, that's the tip. You probably you probably already know this. You want to use a um, your Ethernet connection. Don't go wireless. Oh no shit! Right. Use your use use the uh, hardware internet connection. And another thing that I learned, and and this this bit me in the ass of my second show. Okay, that, that was the first thing Lace said. I was like, don't use wireless <laughs> hardwire yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and. This is the problem. If I had my druthers, I would use USB cams, hardwire USB cams versus the cell phone cams. But I've discovered that unless you have a rock star computer, OB, uh, your computer won't be able to handle two uh, USB audio sources. The Surface Pro can. It's just two not USB enough. audio. Oh, but you audio I mean, no, or video. Or video. video. No video. So oh yeah, your your Surface Pro wouldn't. My my, I have a desktop that would hit, that has. Yeah, you know, so you but can, I have independent video cards for each one, right? Yeah, so you're, you're have uploading to have the jam, enough jam to do that to use right. two separate um, uh, hardwired video sources. So, but that's an, the, this is another tip that ah interesting. Okay, I see what you're saying. So, like because you're hardwiring it in, you're then taxing it more. Whereas if you're coming in over IP, you're not. I don't know exactly how it works, but I do yeah, know I, that. Actually, I'll tell you how it works. It's because the fucking compression has already happened on the phone and over the fo over the network. By the time the signal comes to you, you you're not compressing it because it's not coming as a raw file getting exactly. compressed by the computer and then being streamed out. So that so, makes a lot so of sense, you, actually. So what are you saying? Okay, good, 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 because my buddy is getting ready to try to um, 
my buddy is getting ready to try to use two USB sources into his new computer. And he only, uh, computer only has one video card. So I don't know if he's going to be able to use two USB ports. With a UBI, probably it's, we'll find I, out. Yeah, I mean, you'll see, I guess. But but my instinct is you need separate video cards for each of the... I mean, I guess it creates a software driver for the... For the it on the thing i always get uh, the fucking driver thing drives me crazy i was confused i don't know what? so hey can i did i did you see the my design for sesh cam my my theoretical design can i share this with you because you're uh you're a technical person you can see sure. if i missed anything uh hold on a sec here da, 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 da. Oh, here's some here's some slow computing. Uh, so yeah, so this is I guess my uh, my overview screen. So what I see is a an RJ45 to handle, as you said, to hardwire out to the network. You okay. you put you put a uh, you put the server architecture on a on a chip with its own memory on the device it's basically it's basically a camera with four hdmi and four usb inputs so you have and the four usb is probably too much it'll probably be two in the end um uh an in and out for audio and and then a preview two hdmi outs so that you can do a preview and a and a uh and a program <clears throat> kind of uh, view out from the monitor, mm. and and my my thought is very much kind of inspired form factor by one you, of these. Could you put that back up? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna um I'm gonna I was just gonna try to do a, a screenshot of it. Sure, man. I can send it to you too. Well, I'll just this is quick. Got it. Got Hold it. <laughs> Hold on. Where are you? You can come back. All right. This was my my original. I'm thinking it through. Fucking like, hmm, let's see. It has to go here and thing, and then back to there. And <laughs> hmm. Keep that up. Please. Got it. <laughs> um. As I steal Actually, all your ideas, don't worry about that. That's not my jam. <laughs> no, dude, I'm, I'm, I want you on my advisory board. Actually, I, I'm ramping up to, uh, to, to basically see if you want to, want to be on the advisory for this because I think you're, you're perfect and you're exactly the kind of, uh, you know, you're the, you're the person who should have an alpha version of this to be able to, to run through and, and trial and, and. Uh, uh, my my thought was uh, hold on a sec here. Let me just turn that back off. There we go. Um, my 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 idea was essentially like a, a camera device that has the streamer on it, has a basic kind of simple menu. If you look at that graphic that that you grabbed, like just two or three presets. That that let you do the side by side, the close up, the mm -hmm. you know the the three shot where you have two small ones and and the big mm -hmm. screen. That kind of you know you just have a few presets in it already, and and probably load it with an SD card with with other pre like if you want to sort of yeah. reskin it, you yeah. can just load a a pack that way. But but it comes out of the box with your basic effects and stuff just plug in your name and it and it'll layer it into the different uh, uh banners and stuff you don't need to create separate fucking banners and everything you you have your you know your techno version your homesy you know green grass version that 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 kind of sort of preset level but it's just written over top of of obs and huh. running on the device so this becomes yeah. The streaming device that you plug in, you could go wireless if you if you needed to, but ideally you plug your RJ45 in and you get your cell phone that connects to this as your second camera. I and now this thing anymore. just 
like you're in in, in the way of the uh Oh, you can't see me. I'm, I'm, I'm there. You're behind, behind the. Uh... It's funny. It's you're, you're doing all this animation. I can see your hands moving, but I can't see you. <laughs> is, is it the? Is it? Can you see me now? No. Nope. What the fuck? What's on my screen? Oh, the, because uh, I'm. Maybe, maybe it's something I did. Hold on. No, it's. Yeah. There. Well, no, no. Are you still there? There we go. Yeah, I'm still Sorry, there. I okay, great. You're back. Okay. Um, yeah, anyway, so the, the uh, you know, this was very much the form factor inspiration was these old Canon cameras. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, you remember these, uh, the, yep. the mini, right? So if you, if you could basically turn, you know, a cell phone and this into your studio and not have to stream out through your laptop not how you know so so your laptop was running serato and 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 all of that stuff uh uh that's kind of the goal basically yeah and i think and i think the the you know the sesh thing for me started as the kind of the the cannabis industry has the same problem that the dj rights have which is you get banned if you're you know if you're uh, talking cannabis. It, it, cannabis is a very weird area right now because even though it's legal, it's not legal, and the yeah. main platforms don't want to, you know, promote it, and and people get their shadow banned, so they're you know they're not showing up in searches, and so I originally got Sesh Cam for the, the uh, weed community, but but when I was listening to all the DJ stuff, and actually I talked to Annie. Uh, about her streaming and, and just you know the challenges that she was having it really got me thinking about um because i really enjoyed listening to her sets but i just it was like oh, can i like i literally yeah, called her like can i help you with your stream it's painful <laughs> she still hasn't got a new camera it's, 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 that's really good but her, her her like that just like that one bobblehead thing is kind of just weird uh, I, mean, yeah, I know it's so painful when it when the when the music's so good and then and then the but I think it's because she's you know she's using an older laptop and she's just using the camera on the laptop and that's you know that's all she's got right so you know what I'm, I'm telling you man it's streaming unless you're you've gotten to the game sooner I, I was talking to DJ Maurice um, Eric Lewis Vitamin E um, who else I know that's doing it um, my buddy Bradley B um luke and steph uh summers um who else uh, jason white is doing it jason's oh. got i i loved his uh his he's got a great launch yeah. at the channel he's so visual like he's always uh you know he's he, i i i think i kind of liken myself most to him because i have i've always done the video projectors and yeah. the lasers and the have to me it's Show? It's all part of it. his show was amazing. I fucking totally watched the whole thing. It was like it was everything that I envision as you know how it you know how you should sort of run it. I guess the only thing missing was some sort of interactivity. There, there's no tip jar. There was no you know I couldn't trigger some fucking visuals. I'd love to be able to like you know if I tip so much I I, I set off the fucking you know siren or. <laughs> Though, you know, having those yeah, kinds of little things built him. in to me is like the next level shit, right? Like, yeah, you should, um, you should suggest that to him. He, he's, um, he's, well, for sure. No, and he's such a great, you know, he's such a good creative collaborator as well. Yeah. Like, I really enjoy. I've worked with him a bunch of different times. We've, we've, we've got a nice relationship, I think. So, um, he would definitely be somebody that I would reach out to with this as well because he, he's you know clearly going through the whole learning curve too <laughs> well, you know, he's, I think he's, he's arrived i mean his show was freaking oh yeah, yeah i don't i don't mean he's i mean he's had to go through the whole learning yeah. curve i guess is what i meant for and 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 i've seen i've watched him go through it i mean he didn't you know he he that didn't happen all you know overnight no. right so no um, no i got uh, one more key suggestion that uh, and one one really really valuable lesson i learned the hard way uh, on episode two, I was, what was I making? Don't even remember. Oh, mac and cheese. My jalapeno back bacon mac and cheese. Good that you're covering the classics. Yeah. Did you do bacon yet? Because I'm a big fan of bacon. Yeah, well, bacon was in the jalapeno and bacon mac and cheese. Oh, wow. Yes. Mm. Okay, so, but this, this, this is the, this fucking bit me in ass. First, first mistake was I tried to do it on Mixed Cloud. 
Mixcloud crash. So during the middle of the show, <clears throat> I switched over to Twitch. Twitch ran great, but the video was okay, but the audio was, I kept finding this echo. I would say something and it would say, and it would, there would be an echo in my, my you had, like the mic on on the on the laptop or something you were catching the, the delay it wasn't though and I, I it wasn't until yesterday i figured out what the problem was and maybe you might have a um a, a thought about this is on the surface pro which i'm running obs on i had the twitch channel on as well so I'm running OBS into the Twitch channel, but in, in order to see a, ha, use it as a video monitor, I could yeah sort of, yeah yeah. So you've got the lag. That's what I'm saying. You had the lag going on from from uh, but that from, uh, but that was coming a feedback was, loop basically. It was a feedback loop. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Don't do that. If you run OBS into Twitch, use a different or Twitch or whatever. Use a different. Um, well, yeah, you have to look at it on your phone or, or yeah, something or, else. Where, would, where it's completely disconnected. Don't do that. I, I didn't. I could, and it literally ruined the show because all my mixes sounded like they were fucking slapping and going all over the place, and it was horrible. But now that I know, I look at my 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 video monitor is coming off this my DJ laptop, which is even better because it's huge. It's like whatever so yeah, yeah, yeah whatever you do don't do that because that was bad don't do that it's a good point about the preview though you kind of need that like you know i guess it's either a phone or a tablet app or something like that that lets you preview to see that your uh that your feed is actually feedy right because there is that tendency to want to make sure that it's like all right let's just double check and see that it's actually yeah. working right? well, I mean, you, yeah you, you don't you don't just hit feed and then not see it or, or you know a lot of guys are you know have another guy on the other line okay turn up your mic this and that because every you, you you don't have oh there's another thing when you're using your your card whatever yeah yeah Whatever you're using, your whatever interface you're using that's going out. If, if you want to do this, I mean, before you vent your your camera daily there, you this has a monitor out. Whatever you can tell whether your feed, whether your mic or whatever, whatever comes out of this, it's what's going into OBS. So always monitor through your um, your uh, interface yeah but i mean <coughs> those are all preamp hardware devices right i mean that that's i'm trying to minimize the amount of of links into the into the chain that I, that uh happen, i completely right? agree but until if you want to do stream if this is what you're going to do i don't know what, yeah yeah that's what you do here's another thing makes sense i i didn't even need to buy that when i already owned this I forgot about it. This is a USB audio interface that I already owned. I was using this to uh, to take vinyl and convert it to digital. I was thinking about those. Like, I have a couple of those uh, those little mini keyboards and stuff. Uh, what were they? Uh, I can't remember the brand name now. But like, they had audio. They had like USB audio cards built into them, and then you could just trigger them. I'm I'm betting I could probably spin up one of those and and uh, use that as a as a card. Well, I mean that that's if that's yeah, what everybody doing. has the uh, I don't know about you, but I have like the tickle trunk of fucking ancient fucking cables and, and cards and like I must have something that'll work here. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's seen that uh, Facebook meme, a man finds a lot a, a box of cable that and he's absolutely positive that that's going to be able to be used for something eventually and it's just yeah. freaking, like the rat's of nest of <laughs> like <laughs> <Just stop. laughs> scuzzy yeah. i'll need one of these someday <laughs> exactly exactly yeah so that those those that's pretty much sums up uh what i could tell you about obs right now i'm i'm i've got i ran into this guy 
Remember Red Truck Beer? When did you move? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Red Truck. The the down by commercial drive there behind the he was always good to the race team. He was uh he was a good he was a good supplier. Well what those guys did they've got a big nice brewery and they opened their um their parking lot up to, for tailgaters for, for social distancing. <laughs> so I show up and I've got like these two little chairs and a little little table and I'm waiting for Dave Ginn. Oh, uh-huh, Dave! So Dave Ginn comes in town. Oh, Dave Ginn comes in town, and I'm waiting for him. Jesus, Dave! I fucking haven't seen him in 20 years, probably. Is he like? How is he still alive? For Christ's sake! The guy was like, well, though he was like ageless then. I was gonna say he was like 20 years older than us at the time. He must be like fucking 70 now, but he probably He's looks like exactly 65, the same. Looks exactly the same. All he <laughs> wants to do is just, you know. Chase twenty year olds and get yeah. fucking uh, get wrecked. Same guy. <laughs> Same guy. Oh, I love it. I fuck, yeah. I'd love to hang out with Ken again. Dude, I, I, I kid you not. So he, I hadn't seen him in fucking months, and he, he said he, he, every once in a while because he, he's in Squamish, and he, he pops into town. Hey, you want to get some ramen? So I, I'm waiting, and then this uh, guy pulls up in a red truck, a red truck, red truck, and he he goes to me, he goes. This is a nice setup you got there. And I'm like, yeah, you know, this is doing the best we can here. And he goes, yo, so you think we need some music in the parking lot? I'm like, so I go, and I'm like, music, I got a whole sound system. I know every DJ in town, blah, blah, blah. So then he hands me his card. He says, listen, I'm going to send you a promo pack. And then hopefully we can do something with this new brand of fucking nudes that they're going to do. So this is, I'm getting my, I woke up to write this guy an email to see if I can get some sponsorship. <laughs> nice. Well, oh, well, he. I mean, they were always. They were really good in the. They were one of the, you know, key people that Leandro would always go to for, uh, you know, for a five grand uh, check and a bunch of free beer and and like they. I know they backed a few of them, my warehouse parties back in the day as well. So I mean, he should be good for. He's always been supportive of local arts and culture, shall we say. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, I and, and I, I and actually, and I mean, there's a great example. Like to me, go pitch that guy doing a live show, right? Like you want to do that stream from the fucking parking lot that becomes like a Vancouver fucking sure. social distancing classic, right? Trust me, it's already in the works. It's it's, it's the funniest thing is it's I part of um, we um, uh, we eat with our eyes first. So when I changed the name, I changed the initiative. I also said, included, listen, we've been posting pictures of our food, our food porn, of the stuff we make, because no one can go into restaurants. This is an easy way for us to support our restaurants. So if you see, go to your favorite restaurant and you want to give them some pub, some love, post the picture of their stuff, the name of the restaurant, and then I said, I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to, every week I feature a uh, feature contributor and I put their photo as the group cover. Well, I'm going to do the same thing for the restaurants. I'm going to have uh, a feature one restaurant a week in order to generate business to give back to the community to help build us a back up because a lot of places are going to go out of business after when it's all over. It just can't uh, be. So, it's so heartbreaking to me that the... I I saw all this months ago because I so many of my clients were I had 70 like fitness trainers, restaurants, little, you know, coffee shops. I was all focused on local yeah. business and uh of course, you know, I was one of the first expenses that they had to cut. Yeah. And uh and so I literally in the space of 3 days I lost 70 fucking clients. It was and and it really made me think about the, the economics of it all and it's just like like it's they're not brutal. coming back man they're not going to be able to they're not going to be able to ride this yes, it's going to be fucking it, oh, it's it will it will it, something, it, it, something has to happen like it this okay, i mean this is going to veer into a whole other area but but the the basically the only one winning right now in my mind is the banks right like like the all of this money that's going is going to rent to the landlords, to ultimately, the, I mean, some of the landlords have, have it paid off, but most of them, it's the banks. And then yeah. a whole shit ton of people are going to get their fucking properties repoed, right? We're going to have to have that whole fucking flip go. Like, like it's literally, we're shoveling money, our taxpayer money, downstream to the banks when we could just fucking, 
you know, freeze, like the whole housing, I mean, in Vancouver, I mean, yeah, Montreal is way better than Vancouver for this, at least. I'm, I'm, I'm in so much of a better position now than I was there, but, but still it pains me when I think about how much of this CERB money is ultimately just going to pay rent and not even at a rate of like, you know, where you're supposed to have a third of your income cover your shelter. It's like, no, that's like three quarter of it. People are like going to have to eat or now you're going to face eviction because of course they're going to eat and not pay the rent or, or pay some portion. Well, of the rent. I, I mean, there's, there's, first of all, let's, let's, let's look at the position of Canada's in. We, we're way better off because of one reason. We don't have an industrial military complex. Oh, well, but I mean, yes, but we live in the draft of one. I, I would argue that I mean, we're in a much better position than the States. I, I mean, for sure. Okay. <laughs> You're, you come from Chicago, so you have a more direct appreciation for it, I guess, than I Second of all, do, second of all, it's, it's only going to be realistically, I don't know. You're in Montreal now, right? Yeah. Okay. You guys are way worse off than we are in Vancouver at the COVID wise. Oh yeah. No, we're in fucking, we're in like, it just keeps going up, man. It's like, ah, way worse. But in, in BC, we've got less than 320 active cases right now. I got, we got 30,000, I think, or some fucking okay. crazy number, so, like a new thousand every day. So, which is, which brings up another subject. It's like, let's see how fucking independent fucking Quebec wants to be now. Oh, <laughs> 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 But that, that being said, that being said is... I, I, I mean, and, and he's talking about reopening. It's like so crazy. I don't. I don't understand this. Like the the politics here are so disconnected from the people. It's like it's it's in my mind. It's crazier than it is in the states because it's so conservative on the one side. But I don't meet any of these people. I mean, unless they're all in the country, in the you know, in the suburbs, and and I just because I'm in Montreal, like like it's an urban culture, so it's different. But this whole like. You know, you can't cover your fucking. You can't wear religious garb if you work for the government. Like, what? Okay. <laughs> when did we get into the fucking the business of policing religions on people? This is like, this is an issue I have, and, and this is something that really just drives me nuts. Is no one under, talks about the reason why the northern, north northeastern time zone and whatnot was so affected immediately. And I, I there's in the States is one reason, and for black people, especially because they're the majority of people that are dying, is healthcare wasn't accessible. Um, once, once, once they did get sick, they couldn't get help. Well, they, and there's a culture of avoiding going to the hospital or go, avoiding any, like, it, you don't go to get because it you will it's like it can fucking ruin you well that's trip. not only that's not and it's so so you got your social economic issue right there and then you have your the, the issue that uh because a lot of those people worked in a service industry they would they they had to go into work exposing them more but here's one factor that no one talks about and i don't understand in northern cities like new york chicago boston they have sophisticated and established and well used public transportation systems. So the, the the way that these people are getting work was exposing them even more. So so you you've got all these factors, and that's just complete, that they had to go to work because they it, because they were at central. And, and they're all minimum wage fucking exactly. people. Like it's just it's so ridiculously top heavy and. Uh, I, so all the yeah. people that are going to the freaking city hall with guns in the states, it didn't affect them. They weren't. They were. They don't have those type of jobs. They don't care. It was sad. Mm -hmm. So, same thing probably happened in Montreal. Oh, the 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 socioeconomic breakdown. I mean, why did it? Why why is it 
uh, something that's affecting care homes, it's not because the elderly are more exposed to it. It's because the care homes have all been privatized. And so they do the same McDonald's fucking deal with the staff there where they, you know, you can only work fucking 26 hours or, tw you know, 32 hours or somewhere. You're not full time. You don't have to get benefits. And so they all have to work two or three different jobs to, to make ends meet. They're all low paid, you know, like you want, good quality care, give people fucking a decent living wage and, a and, a you know, and, well, a, uh, and mean, security, they were, like they were at risk people to begin with. I mean, that's, the, that's, I, has a lot I, but no, but actually, you know, what's really fucking interesting is if you look, look at the numbers carefully, all of the affected fucking elderly care homes are all privately run. The, the, pu the publicly run ones are fine. There's one right near us here. There isn't a single fucking case. It's because the private ones, the staff go back and forth and they're underpaid. The public mm. ones, they work at one job, 40 hours. They have a fucking union rep. They get benefits. They have health care. They go home to their kids and go to sleep. And, you know, and they don't have to fucking hustle three jobs to make ends meet. All of the problems are in the private ones where they have just stripped away all of the kind of extra expenses expenses of you know of making sure that uh so so you know maybe the fucking thing is more profitable for an investor but it's definitely not safer for your for grandma <laughs> well yeah, definitely well it, it just seems like a, um and it, and quebec i think is worse than i i don't know enough of the politics but my understanding from what i've uh assessed is that Quebec had an earlier and more aggressive policy of privatizing uh, old age homes uh, and where Ontario and some of the other provinces are still much more, uh, you know, tightly run by the province kind of thing. Uh, I, I believe, again, I don't know the politics enough, but from what I've heard, it's, it's that they privatized early mm -hmm. And with privatization, of course, comes, you know, how can we cut costs in every, yeah, every well, department, I, right? I, I think this term, I, I'm going to just <coughs> throw it out there. As far as a lot of government's concerned, this is a convenient inconvenience. Meaning the people who are going to tax their social security system, they're going to save tons of money because they're going to be dead. Yeah, that's a dark way of looking at it. But yeah, I agree. It's it's sad, but it's it's that's 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 why I think, especially in the states, they're like, oh yeah, we need to get the economy right. We need to get rid of all those seventy and over. There was, did you hear about the the, uh, the the legislator in Texas that actually blatantly said, oh, oh people, are, they should be okay with letting this virus run its course. Because you know they should be able to be okay with sacrificing themselves to save our economy. He actually went out and I said, did, that. "I know, I heard, I heard that." It's insane. A fucking idiot! That was just crazy. He was like, oh, "What?" No, you know what's an idiot? It's people are going to still vote for him. That's what's idiotic. Yeah, I don't even try and understand the the American vote. Like the 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 stupid thing is, every American I know is, but you know, it's like like they they don't represent that america at all it's like it's like again this total disconnect between you know it's, it's the, the 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 circus that is the uh the american electoral system it's not even you know it doesn't well, we're, even we're pretend to represent the people anymore in my opinion we'll find out in a couple of weeks well listen i gotta write this freaking email before all i right, forget man. about it I, uh, I thanks so much for for chatting i'm uh, i'm really glad that uh I'm I'm really glad that you you're uh, that I connected with you because because it's it is it's uh it's frustrating going through this shit so no worries uh, dude I mean if you have any other questions let me know I've uh, I've I've paid the toll like literally it took me a week yeah, to right. figure out I, I couldn't use the same and I'm serious. Um, I really, so my thought with this, tell me what you think about this, the having kind of, uh, I, I put this on Indiegogo, the, the crowdfunding campaign, um, mm -hmm. the platform. And, uh, my thought was to basically, before I launch it, uh, go out and get a bunch of DJs who go, yeah, I, you know, I'd really love one of these and, and 
you know, I guess this is the part I don't know if, if A, they would do it or if B, people would fucking do it. But I have uh, I have a uh, patron sesh as a as a category in the crowdfunding uh, campaign where you donate twenty bucks towards buying this for Annie. Basically, yeah. was the model, <laughs> right? So somebody like Annie goes like, "Yeah, this is really cool. This is what I need," and uh, and we we kind of seed the campaign with a bunch of of DJs and and influencers before we launch, so that when we launch, it's you know, all of these people are sort of going, hey, uh, this is something that, that we need to do. Yeah, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Um, and I, I really, uh, I seriously, you're, I mean, you are just one of those core sort of uh, people in, uh, you know, in my life. I know it sounds weird because I know we don't have a close relationship, but but just on a tech kind of I, I always felt like we really connected on the nerd level, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm definitely a nerd. Yeah, and uh, um, so if it, my my intent was to kind of create a uh, um, you know a bank of of shares, effectively that you could sort of go, okay, I'm going to line up a bunch of advisory board people, so I can sort of you know say, okay, this is who's involved in the project. And, uh, it, you know, it may very well be nothing because half the time this shit doesn't go anywhere. But, you know, uh, if yes, it does yeah, go I somewhere, know. then, then uh, you know, then at least it's uh, there's a there's a planning for how to kind of incorporate some some uh, reward for everybody in the in the plan. And, you know, of course, I mean, the proper motivation, the, the we FM, as I like to say. What's in it for me? <laughs> if you can, if you can answer the we FM loop, then the fucking thing just blows up, right? Like, okay. so, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. So I'll I'll keep you posted if you're game to to sort yeah, of uh, I mean, right to be now, a, an advocate. Right, right now, I have nothing but time. I'm I'm hoping that by the end of of um, June, we start the film industry cooks. It's it's it kicks in again. It's it's they're going to bring film back in phase three. They just launched phase two uh, Tuesday. And that's when the restaurants are opening limited. And, and, and the film industry is in phase three. Is that, uh, yeah. and that's where you've been working for the most part. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a rigging grip uh, for IATSE. I still do some rock shows here and there, but only when it's like 60 bucks an hour. You know, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm too old to fucking hump gear now. I hear you, man. I'm oh, no, I, I hump it. I'm a high rigger at the arena. <laughs> I hump. I'm built for it, though. Yeah, but uh, I wouldn't want to do it unless I was getting paid good money for it. Put it that way. Exactly. <laughs> not not that you can't, but just, you know. Uh, yeah, you what's got, the point? Man's I mean, got to eat. If, yeah, if, 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 if uh, you're going to work. Well, and those shows have the budget to do it, right? I mean, that's... well, you, it, it's skilled work too. I mean, you don't want some idiot up like 120 feet above you in the Rogers Arena working above you. You drop one thing, you're gonna kill somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah you will. Kill time now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna invite you to this. Uh, you'll be like uh, one of the first. You'll be, I think, the first. I just set up a group on uh, on Facebook for it, so. Right on. It, it's still kind of uh, what I what I'd like to do is is kind of onboard, as I said, uh, some some influencers around it, and maybe just put this in your head. But mm -hmm. I think you and I would be a fun kind of co-host to talk to DJs about how to get set up for streaming and, for and sure. that kind of stuff. Like that might be a fun little side hustle gig for us, just to create some content together. Because I think mm -hmm. we both have the we both have the tech chops and I know that there's a bunch of DJs that, that are trying to figure this shit out. Right. Like, like, and I, I don't know if it's because gamers are just more sort of setting wise stuff or, or what, but, uh, but it's like, everything's just so gamer centric right now that uh, I don't think a lot of, a lot of DJs won't make it through the, the fucking wade through the mess to, to, you know, to be able to use it for themselves. Right. There's not enough of a roadmap. Mm, and we'll see. I mean, I it, 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 it 
the, the only thing that it's going to save that and change that is people like me who are, who are going to like i have no problem sharing my knowledge right well and that's what i'm saying like a, a show that dealt with that would yeah. be a fun uh you know like a, like almost like a call-in show right like you yeah, have yeah. a ask me anything kind of uh model and then you just sort of pre-select some questions and, yeah, and go fun. through some some kind of gear so okay tell me what you got in your kitchen and we'll tell you what kind of recipe we can okay so you go into this one and then out to there and then make sure the gains are off on there and otherwise it'll like a feedback yeah 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 but you basically know? do what we just did <laughs> exactly <laughs> right because on. you probably have half this shit i mean that's half my premise too is like you know we all have if you've been djing or you've been you know involved in any of this you know half the time it's like yeah i have old cameras and shit that i'd like to be able to put into service for this right like i shouldn't have to fucking suffer to just have like whatever is on my laptop as the only feed yeah i tried to use a camera um just a regular um camera it just no because because <laughs> the aspect ratio is wrong or what like why no because I, I i'd, I'd love to I, this was like my favorite fucking camera i love this still don't camera. Know how or why and it, it would be able to use the cell phone camera which the uh, the resolution is just like just the iPhone five, it's freaking clear as glass, man. It's so good. So what? I'm mean, yeah. like, why bother? I suppose, yeah, yeah. Because because I have you know just because I have the fucking gear is is why. <laughs> yeah, See, that, that but, but yeah, I hear you. It's like the. You know, it's the same as carrying your records in. Like, yeah, exactly. okay, they sound better, but it's not worth the fucking headache. You can carry six times as amount on a fucking phone card now. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's insane. It's like no, most DJs just walk in with a USB stick now, and that's it. Crazy and, when yeah. I think about. Yeah, no. Remember, remember yeah. they had they always had like what, what how do what, how do they justify the entourage that if they don't have four guys carrying their records to come in with them. <laughs> Oh, come on, who's going to bring the blow? <laughs> All, right, All right, man, I got to go. You have a good one, okay? Yeah, it was a pleasure talking to you. Ditto. Peace. Bye.